Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters around the world. Welcome to Lifeline Bible Ministry. Today, God has a very powerful message for you and me. Stay tuned. Do not go away. Please share this video with your friends and with the loved ones. Uh, we're still continuing with the Progressive Church series today. By the grace of the Lord, I thank God for your life and I thank God that you are still alive today and that the hand of God is upon your life. Today, we're going to dive deeply into one of the major topics. It's of very strong prophetic significance. So please stay tuned. Share this video with your friends. And stay with me to the end. God has a special message for you. Now, the series outline, we started with the Lord's warning as introduction. The progressive church characteristics, how you can tell if a church is progressive or not, or if it's a true church. We also took a look at uh, satanic technologies in uh, progressive churches. Number four is progressive satanic social engineering. That's what we looked at last week. So today, by the grace of God, we are going to dive into the end game of progressive churches or church. So what is their end game? What is ahead of them? Why are they doing what they do? We're going to find out today. And what is their goal? Where do they want to take all these confusion? Where do they want to take it to? We're going to look at that today. Uh, next week, God willing, we're going to be taking a look at dismantling the progressive church. And then number seven, the last part, we're going to be looking at staying alert and separate from the world. So let's jump into the lesson. So the rationale for the series is uh, number one, we have a lot of people who are not saved in the church. A lot of people. At the time of Noah, how many people were saved? Eight of the whole world. Today, don't forget many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22 verse 14, few. That means a lot of people going to church in a lot of people in the world. Many are not saved. Their relationship with Jesus is not genuine. Number two, last day's deception taking place. Number three, the leadership of the unsaved church. How do they behave that people can easily see them? Number four, shock, final shock of the unsaved in the days to come when Jesus come, comes for his people. What's going to happen to those who go to church but they are not saved? And then number five, we're looking at tools to stay safe, spiritually safe, I mean, not pandemic safe. I'm talking about you being safe, protecting yourself from the demonic onslaught taking place on the planet today. Number six, tools to stand for the name of Jesus. Number seven, boldness to back away. It's my prayer that by the power of the Spirit of God, you'll be found in Christ Jesus alone. So let's look at the end game of the progressive church today. A brief outline, the preamble, that's what we've just been through. We're going to take a brief review of what we saw last week. So review of part four. Number three, the current falling away taking place. Number four, the prophetic end game. Number five, build up to global religion. Number six, final call of God. And we will conclude this lesson. So part four review from last week. These are some of the things the Lord made us discover or uncover last week. One, the, the global church is heavily lost its salt influence in the world. We knew that Jesus called us to be the salt of the earth. Number two, so number one, we, we have heavily lost that influence, the influence of preservation. Number two, the church is now functioning as a dim light to the world. Instead of being the bright light we've been called to be, the church currently is functioning as a dim light. Three, 
the church is sought a light to the world only through living in holiness and speaking the message of repentance. Without holiness and without speaking the message of repentance, the church is not being the true salt and the true light to the world. Four, the church is the moral compass of the world. Five, the progressive church does not live and preach holiness in the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't do that. They will talk about anything else, but holiness, no, sir. Life in holiness, no. Number six, the progressive church destroys the saltiness and light of the true church. We need to understand that. You're going to expound more about it today. The message of the progressive church silences the voice of righteousness. The message of the true church prepares the way for the Lord Jesus. Three, the voice of righteousness is repentance and holiness in the power of God. Four, the message of the progressive church is covetousness and meeting the goals of the ego. That is all they talk about. Next, the progressive church throws out the message of grace, which is holiness in the Holy Spirit as we await Christ. Next, laws are concocted. Politically, laws are concocted today as we speak to silence righteousness in the culture. Equality Act, as an example, seeks complete protection of what the Lord calls sin. So whatever the scriptures is telling us is wrong, the, the Equality Act that they're trying to pass is seeking to protect people, literally encouraging people to practice what God is calling sin. Nancy Pelosi has no gender specific uh, rules for the 117th Congress in this year. We also saw that there are progressive seminaries to train progressive church leaders. We also discovered the spirit behind progressivism is no one but Aphrodite. Okay, so let's jump into the current falling away. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse two to four. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. What is the Bible saying here? The verse 2 is making us aware that we must not be soon shaken in mind. We must not be troubled at all, whether by a spirit influencing you or by whatever anybody is saying or by letters or whatever concerning the day of Christ. Let nothing shake you. The verse three says, let no man deceive you by any means. Now the word here is giving some prophetic significance. Say that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So that falling away has to take place and that man of sin be revealed. So we need to understand the falling away we're talking about has to happen first before that man of sin be revealed. We're talking about the antichrist man, the man of sin and the son of perdition before he's revealed. The falling away needs to take place first. That's what we're talking about. So it's a global condition of the entire population of the earth will fall away. Fall away from what? 
You want to find out. So falling away is prophesied as end of days phenomena. That's what the Bible is making us aware. So we need to stay alert that we don't fall with them. Take heed that you stand. Please hear me. I'm not talking about denomination. I'm not talking about any of those things. What the word of God is saying is clear. Falling away is happening in the last days. Are we in the last days? Yes. Then the falling away is taking place. So let your eyes be open to that fact. And you stay true to the Lord Jesus Christ. Falling away precedes the coming of the son of perdition. In other words, before the Antichrist shows up, the falling away will happen first. So it is happening right now as we're talking. At a breakneck speed, the falling away is taking place in the world. So we need to be cautioned. If we care about the eternity, and where we're going to spend eternity, please, we need to be cautioned. These are not the days to be playing church at all. We also need to understand the falling away is engineered and intentionally fostered globally. It is not something that is happening accidentally. There, were, there are powers behind the scenes, planning, engineering to bring this to pass. We need to understand that. For some people, oh, we know all about it. We know about the end time. But they are still practicing sin. Their focus is not on Jesus. Their focus is on earthly things. whatever they're calling breakthrough to be. That's what their focus is on. Marriage, cars, money, son. Remember, eternity is a very, very long time which does not end. Okay? So definition of fall away, there's a basic dictionary definition to withdraw fellowship or support, to renounce one's faith, to diminish gradually in size, to drift off course. All these apply to the falling away we're talking about. The course that we're supposed to follow is the morality God has for humanity. Falling away means the entire globe is going to move away from that. People will renounce their faith and go for what the entire globe is saying. What is the whole world talking about? that everybody is drifting towards. Don't be caught up in what the world is drifting towards, but be found in Christ Jesus alone. Don't be caught up with sin. Don't be caught up with the hype happening in the world, political hype and, and things like that. Don't be caught up with them. Please. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ today. So the falling away is a global condition leading to the revelation of the man of sin. That is what will lead to him show up. He's the man of sin. That means he represents sin. That tells you sinfulness will cover the whole planet before this man shows up. Because when there is righteousness, holiness, prayer, Holy Spirit, power, fire, this man cannot work here on the planet. So before he comes, 
He needs to make sure the whole earth is plunged into sinfulness before he shows up. That is why men are going into women's bathroom. All these nonsensical stupidity happening is because the man of sin, his spirit, is working very strong. That's what the falling away is talking about. Open your eyes. Don't laugh. It's a serious thing. So it's a global deviation from the moral compass and fiber from God. The church of Jesus Christ is called to be salt and to be light, to provide a moral compass and a moral fiber onto the entire globe. So for the falling away to happen, the church has to be weakened. How? To get the church to be living in sin. No prayer. They cannot pray. They wouldn't live right. It's all about selfishness. Me, 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 me. And doing whatever they want to do. Fornication, adultery, pornography, witchcraft, cheating, all these different things people do that go against the standards provided unto us by God. That is what the scriptures is talking about. The man of sin, the Antichrist man, needs the voice of morality shut down. That's what he's doing now. He's working spiritually behind the scenes to shut down the voice of morality. They, anybody can do whatever they want. Nobody is perfect. All these things people are doing keeps coming up over and over again conditioning the world that, hey, do whatever you want. Achieve whatever you want to achieve. Be the billionaire in the world. All that. You can be a billionaire today. Have all the money in the world. But wait. The one who is coming has already told us. What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Don't forget, the time of reckoning with the king of kings is very soon coming. Now, the progressive church is the key to silence morality in the world. The progressive church will not talk about righteous living. They will not talk about that. You go to their churches, it's a constant whining. No one is perfect. You hear that over and over again. So the church is sinful. Any kind of sin, you can mention it in the church. You're going to see there. Nobody will talk against it. Once you can give them money, it's just fine. So the few churches preaching the gospel, they will lambast against them. That they are doomsday preachers and people will begin to laugh at them. Because the spirit at work is pushing people towards sinfulness. So the voice that speak against that, that voice is scorned, that voice is shunned, that voice receives attacks, spiritual attacks and physical attacks. If your pastor is preaching against sin, pray for your pastor. Signs of falling away increasing. These signs will tell you the falling away is increasing. The slope is very slippery. Church messages has no element of holiness at all. Sin is given a free pass in churches and in the world. Go to youth services. Their congregations are just boyfriend, girlfriends all over. Some of them girlfriend to girlfriend, boyfriend to girl boyfriend. What is that? The LGBT community. 
and they call them church. Is that a church Jesus is building? The answer to that is no. That is telling you humanity is falling away from the standards of God. Churches focus or focuses on money and personal ego is their central message. Covetousness. The Bible isn't the final authority for believers anymore. People do whatever they want and still call themselves Christian because they think when you call yourself a Christian, that means you are truly a Christian. No, sir. Churches believe in politicians more than the word of God. Some people, they call themselves, in the United States, they call themselves Trumpisms. What kind of nonsense is that? Do you trust in Trump or you trust in God? Who do you believe in? We find next, the world brazenly rejects morality from the scriptures. The church and the whole world is rejecting moral, righteous, holy living and embracing sinfulness. People who go to church, their faith is more of convenience than biblical practice. Violence and sexual sins are the norm. Look at the streets of the United States. Which preachers are speaking against that? Where are they? Where are the so-called leftist preachers? Where are they and who are they? The anarchy on the streets, pornography, involving even ministers of the gospel, are these people gatherings for Jesus or gatherings for Satan? Prayer and deep relationship with Christ is cut off completely from churches. You want to talk about prayer or get people to pray? No, we don't pray like that. It's too much prayer. I don't pray like that. It's too loud. You have to be soft. Nya, 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 nya. Nya, 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 nya. No. Churches, no prayer at all. You talk about prayer, they are quiet. Everybody looking at you. They cannot even communicate with Jesus. That is the state of the church. Talk about soul winning. The church getting engaged to actually talk to people about Jesus? No. They are either too shy or too busy. They don't really care. They are too shy or too busy. That tells you the standards that God has for his children, that's not what people are following. They do People doing whatever they want. That tells you the church. Is falling away, the world is already going ahead, and the church is following. The world is the world. They are practicing sin, and the church is following them to do it. So the urge and the fire of God for the salvation of people is not in many people who call themselves Christians. That means the Holy Spirit's fire is quenched in them. But they want to debate you. For debate, yeah. Arrogantly debating. Over what? Can't you see your fire is gone? Look at John chapter 12, verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness this is jesus speaking whosoever believeth on jesus 
meaning you accept what he's saying and practice what he's saying. You will not live in darkness. The falling away will not overtake you. It's like a wave. It's like a wind blowing across the planet. You lose your God, it takes you down, you are gone. Be awake. And Christ will give you light. Take a look at that. 1 John 5, 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in darkness. When we truly believe in Christ and we practice what the scriptures is telling us, then we become of God. We are not talking about simply attending fellowship. That's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about truly belonging to God, belonging to Jesus. That is one group of people. The other group, no middle ground, is the whole world lying in wickedness. Wickedness as the norm of the world. Where do you belong? Do you belong to Christ or you belong to the world? Don't forget the whole world lieth in wickedness. That means moved away from God. The whole world moves away from, you talk about God, they will laugh at you. Why would they laugh at you? Because they are lying in wickedness. Jesus Christ is out of the conversation. You talk about Christ, talk about the Holy Spirit. No, they don't want to hear it. Talk about praying. Uh -uh -uh. No. That tells you they are lying in wickedness. Final global state of wickedness before the man of sin will show up. We are witnessing that with our own eyes today. Antichrist spirit is using the progressive churches to shut down the moral compass of the world. Why? Because they are not going to preach about morality. What does that mean? That simply means the Antichrist spirit is working through the preachers to shut their mouth. Would they find something to preach? Yes, they would. But whatever they're going to preach about has to do with money, has to do with covetousness, has to do with appealing to the sinful nature of man. Not holy living. Not life to please Jesus. Sinfulness. Lord have mercy. My brothers and sisters, it is time you draw close to Christ in holiness and genuine personal relationship with him. Seriously, because Jesus Christ is coming very soon. Let's look at the prophetic end game. Where is all this going to? Revelation chapter number 13, we look at verse 2 to 4. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his hairs as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Listen, and all the world, all the world wandered after the beast. In verse 4, and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with the beast? What is the Bible saying here? So the end goal is all the world to worship the dragon, 
talking about Satan, and the beast that Satan gave his power to. So that means in the days to come, very soon, the entire planet, say all the world, will worship Satan. So satanic worship is coming. So the falling away is preparing the way for that. That Satan will be worshipped by the whole world and the beast will be worshipped by the whole world. So preparing the population for that is what we are witnessing with our eyes today. That people can no longer speak. That people are practicing sin. You cannot talk against that. They will tell you no one is perfect, so keep your mouth shut. That's what that word means. Leave me alone to do whatever I want. So the world is doing whatever they want. Brothers and sisters, we need to open our eyes. This is the end game, satanic and beast worship. So all world religions will unite. Whatever re religion we have in the world will unite as one. But remember, that is outside Jesus Christ. This unity is under Satan. All religions outside Jesus Christ working and moving towards this end game. And the end game, let me repeat, is global satanic lordship and worship. The whole world will pay obeisance to Satan and not Jesus. We need to understand that's the end game. As for me, I'm not going to do that. Watch and see. If you don't worship Satan or the beast or the image of the beast, wait and see what will happen to you. They will kill you. Look at Revelation, the same chapter, 13. We look at verses 11, 12, and 15. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he speak as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not. Worship the image of the beast should be killed. Once again, what is the Bible saying here? The verse 11 is talking about the beast which speaks as Satan. And that beast exercises all the power of the first beast. So we're talking about beast number two. And the beast number two will cause everyone which dwells on the planet to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So we're talking about the false prophet to come. He has power and the power will cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. So the earth itself will worship the first beast and them which dwell on the earth will worship the first beast. Listen. And that beast, the second beast, will cause as many as to not worship the image. Sorry. Is it that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as to not worship the image of the beast should be killed? So the image of the first beast. If people don't worship that image, they will be killed. So we have Satan himself, we have the first beast, and then we have the image of the first beast. Humanity will worship these three items. Satan, the Antichrist man, and the image of the Antichrist. And people who do not worship that image, they will be killed. 
That is Bible prophecy, which is coming to pass. That is what is coming to pass. Nobody can stop it. No one can stop this. So if you don't worship the image of the beast, they're going to kill such people. That means anyone, those who are planning to hide in the mountains, go on. If you hide, they will still look for you and terminate you. They're going to kill you. The time to give your life to Jesus is today. Global satanic antichrist image of beast worship is coming. Demonic powers will completely overrun the world. Hmm. Global Satan and beast mandatory worship is coming. That is the end goal. It is coming. Prophetic worship religion end goal is coming. The light of the world is completely shut off from the world at this point. Morality is gone. The world is totally given to Satan and the beast as we speak. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that now ye know what withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity do already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's the word of God. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Once again, what is the Bible saying here? The verse 5, the writer is saying, I've told you this before, but I'm going to repeat. The verse 6, then now ye know what withholded. Something is withholding the Antichrist from showing up. So the mystery of iniquity, the Antichrist spirit is already at work. It's already working, pushing for the falling away to happen. So that the falling away is gaining speed as we speak. Things are getting more crazy as we speak. But someone, a power, is preventing the Antichrist from being fully blown and revealed in the world. So when that power is taken out of the way, then that wicked be revealed. The, anti, the man of sin is called wicked. That's why you see the uppercase W. The Bible calls the Antichrist man wicked. Not a wicked person, wicked. That means he's the personification of wickedness. So before it's revealed, a power it's blocking him from showing up. That power has to be taken out of the way. And the Bible says the Antichrist is working, is after the working of Satan with all power. That means the power of Satan is given to the Antichrist to operate. With signs and with lying wonders, he will show a lot of things in the world, but it's all coming from Satan. That God is going to this. Uh, destroy the Antichrist. But we need to understand that a power is keeping him away. Right now, as we speak, that power is blocking the Antichrist from coming. A withholding power is blocking the Antichrist man from showing up. The withholding power is keeping the man of sin and global total wickedness from showing up. I need for you to understand, there's a blocking force. What is that blocking force? 
So the withholding power, plus the world living in sin, plus the progressive church is what we see today. And that is the current transitioning state. We are living in a transitioning state as we speak right now. A state of transition. Transition from what? Transition from the world where moral compass from God, God's word was followed. The word of God from the scriptures was followed. People respected God. But there's coming a time when there will be total global satanic worship, beast worship, image of beast worship. So we are now being transitioned into that time. The end game, that's what is taking place. So the withholding power will be removed. Then we're going to have full blown satanic worship and wickedness on the planet. When the withholding power is removed, the man of sin, wickedness, will show up. So currently we are in the transitioning state. Do not forget. The withholding power is the Holy Spirit in the church. The withholding power is the Holy Spirit in the church. Not just the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in the church. Listen, I need for you to understand this. The Holy Spirit will not be removed from the earth completely. Why? Because he's God. Will God be removed from the entire planet? The answer to that is no. That he is operating in the church. Preaching in the church. Living in holiness in the church. Providing a moral compass for the world as we speak. So the withholding power has the moral compass as the salt and light of the world. That is what is keeping things at bay. Why? Because people still are turning between living morally right or sinning. Are people are where sin is sin. Yes, they are. By the preaching, the praying, the power of the Spirit of God working through the church is what is keeping the Antichrist at bay. As the church is praying, angels of God are released. A lot of warfare is taking place in the realm of the Spirit to keep the Antichrist from coming. But when the withholding power, which is the Holy Spirit in the church, is removed, then there is no salt and no light in the world, and the world will be plunged completely under satanic and demonic rule and lordship. So build up to global religion. The build up. I need to pull your mind back to history. There's something we call inquisition. If you've never heard about it before, I want you to learn this today. After this message, research about Inquisition. This is organized torture and terror as official church policy. Listen. Listen very carefully. Which church is that? Is that the true church of Jesus? No, this is the Roman Catholic Church with headquarters at the Vatican. They will torture, they will kill anyone who confess Jesus as the only means of salvation. The Roman church does not believe in that. They have their seven sacraments, which still will not provide salvation for anyone. So if you say 
that your faith in Jesus saves you, they will kill you. That is what the Inquisition was about. They will feed you to the flame. They will burn you. Take a look at this. I found this. Let's share this quick. Why were heretics burnt? Who were called heretics? That means the person is simply confessing Jesus. So burning was the punishment under ancient Roman punishment for treason after crucifixion had been abolished in the fourth century. After the crucifixion was abolished. Now, if they get hold of you confessing Jesus, they burn you. And heresy was seen as you are a traitor to the Roman Empire, Holy Roman Empire, so-called. Not only burning, if you look at the bottom here, it says that in some jurisdictions, burning was not the punishment used. For example, the Venetians drowned traitors and heretics. So they were drowning people, drowning people, and burning people for their faith in Jesus. It was an attempt, satanic attempt, to shut down the gospel of Jesus, to shut down the voice of righteousness. So it's not something that began today. It started a long time ago. But you're never going to hear about the Inquisition. Many people are not aware. Google that and see what you find. Very horrible times in the past. It's a torture chamber. They torture and kill. Hanging, do all kinds of things you don't want to talk about. So the Roman Catholic Church has the blood of the saints in it. Killing of the saints, that means the blood of the saints is in the Catholic Church. As an institution. Don't forget, if you kill someone, the blood of the person is on your hands. And the blood is crying out before God. The Roman Catholic Church carries the blood of the saints. So during the medieval times, those who were tortured and killed were believers in Jesus Christ. They were called heretics, and they killed them. The Catholic Church carries the blood of the saints. Revelation 18, verse 2, verse 23, 24. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth what is the bible saying here the bible is talking about babylon the great and the judgment of babylon the Bible is making us aware Babylon has become the hold of every foul spirit and every cage of every, sorry, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. What does that mean? That means that is a satanic headquarters on the planet. Every unclean and hateful bird, every foul spirit, demon powers are found in Babylon. And Babylon carries the blood of the saints. So Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church Vatican. That's what the Bible is making us aware. The verse 23, very important. Say, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Who is the bridegroom? Jesus. Who is the bride? The true church. And their voices are heard in Babylon. What does that mean? It means Babylon as a spiritual power is covering the true church. 
Why? Because Babylon is in charge of things on the planet. He said, by the sorceries of Babylon, all nations are deceived. So talk about the false prophets. Talk about the false teachers. Talk about progressive church leaders. The power in charge of these people is Babylon. And the verse 24, the word of God is making us aware that in Babylon, the Roman church was found the blood of prophets, the blood of saints that were killed. Not only at that time, it's happening today. And all that were slain upon the earth, their blood is found in Babylon, that spirit. Remember, the Vatican is only the physical representation of that spirit. It's a female spirit, very powerful global force of witchcraft. The Vatican is only a physical representation of it. We need to understand that. So talk about global deception. Talk about the falling away, that the whole earth is not even aware it's happening. It's all coming from Babylon, the great. Babylon is the center of glo global witchcraft, deceiving the global population away from Jesus. Babylon silences the voice of righteousness. There's the spirit behind all of that. Babylon is the power behind the false prophets and false teachers. The progressive church, the power running the progressive church is Babylon. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, 2, 5, and 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, that is coming again over and over, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. What is the Bible saying here? That spirit is called the great whore. And that spirit sitteth upon many waters. The waters represent people. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the inhabitants of the earth are drunk. People don't even know what's happening in the world today. People are confused politically. It's worse than just politics. It's worse. Pandemic, no, it's worse. There are powers behind the scenes working some serious things to happen in the world, to plunge the world into sin and get the world ready for the Antichrist to show up. It is happening. Something I need to draw your attention to. Say, she is called Babylon the Great. She is also called the mother of Halos. That means she's the originator, but has daughters. Practicing halotry away from Christ. What does the daughters represent? They represent false religions and false churches. So towards the prophetic end game, Babylon will call her daughters back to herself. That is what she's doing now. The Bible calls that what? One, uh, sorry, the, the, in the world it is called interfaith movement. The mother of Halos is calling her daughters back and getting ready for the man of sin to show up. The mother of Halos calling each of the Halos that she's come up with. Every false religion is coming from her. Every abomination practice on the earth is coming from her. And once again, she's drunken with the blood of the saints and those who belong to Jesus who have been killed. 
The spirit killing them is Jesus Christ. Sorry, the spirit killing the martyrs of Jesus Christ is Babylon. So currently, the interfaith movement, that T.G. Jakes is one of the leaders of that movement in the United States, Kenneth Copeland. And all these people, it is simply mystery Babylon calling her daughters back to herself to get ready for the grand finale where all religions will come together. So Babylon is the mother of all false religions and fake Christian movements as well. Babylon is drunk with the blood of saints. Killing of the saints of Jesus Christ. This is nothing against any innocent Roman Catholic church going person, no. It's not against any of such people. I'm speaking against the spirit, which is opposing Jesus Christ. Today, Babylon is gradually calling her children home. Take a look at that. Yep. Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, on and on and on the list goes. They are being called home. Look at that. The Pope in, in Thailand with a statue of Buddha. Buddhism as one of the daughters of the Vatican. One of the daughters of Babylon. If you see this symbol anywhere, all religions, their mother is Babylon, whose physical representation is the Vatican. Take a look at that, the Abraham Accord, which happened just recently under Trump, forged an accord to connect Israel and Abu Dhabi, where the Chrislam headquarters, known as the Abrahamic Faith House, is located. So the house for Abrahamic faith, basically fake Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, modern Talmudic, Satanic Judaizers, those three religions. Their headquarters will be in Abu Dhabi. So under the Abraham Accord with Trump and uh, what do you call him? Bibi, Netanyahu, the accord they sign up, it paved the way for the Jews to join the Muslims and the Vatican to create the Chrislam headquarters, which will be known as Abrahamic Faith House. You need to open your eyes. This is very recent. It's happening. Take a look at that. Germany to begin construction on Chrislam House of One. That's what they're going to call it. House of One for one world religion worship services. That will also include atheists. So gathering of the world against Jesus for the final satanic worship that is taking place. And that is what the progressive church is working towards. The church which is against Jesus. But hear what Jesus is saying. And, and Je Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What is your argument? So whatever they're doing up there is outside of Jesus Christ. Oh, we all have to be one. One under whom? One for what? Open your eyes, open your ears. John 5, 22. Say, for the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. What is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying, the coming judge of the world is Jesus Christ. Today, why don't you give your life unto him? Be genuinely and sincerely give your life unto him and promote him and warn the world. Like this video, share with friends. Share with friends to hear. We are living in the last days. The only way is Jesus. And he is the soon 
becoming judge and king. The call of God to you and me is total surrender to Christ. Today, without humble, genuine faith in Christ, the lake of fire is waiting. You don't want to go there. The Lord is calling you and me. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Please share vi this video. Amen.